are countless people that feel shame around their sexuality. Likewise, far too many people also feel shame when it comes to their bodies and their body image. Hello everyone, my name is Sarah. I'm a holistic nutritionist specializing in the psychology of eating and today I'm super, super jazzed to be talking to you about body image and sexuality and how I believe the two of these things are connected. Eating good food and having sex are arguably two of the most enjoyable acts that we can do as humans. They are also two things that we need to do as humans in order to survive as a species and procreate. So because these things are a necessity for life, I believe that we are meant to actually enjoy these experiences. However, this is often not the case. When we feel such intense feelings, such as shame or guilt, these type of feelings can stunt us and they can cause a lot of deep emotional pain and suffering. And it can be especially detrimental when we feel such intense feelings about engaging in very normal human activities. So for those who may struggle with a negative body image, a solution may be to try and control appetite and to regulate food intake. This can lead us to eating a very boring and bland diet that doesn't allow room for indulgence and spontaneity and enjoyment and pleasure. If we don't feel pleasure and we don't feel fulfilled after eating, we are still going to be seeking and looking for that pleasure reward. For some, and very, very, very often, this can lead to binge eating and overeating. Typically of highly palatable foods, foods that we often avoid and restrict when we diet. Now, in other cases, sometimes we can use food as a coping mechanism to deal with feelings of inadequacy. Some people falsely believe that if we can control and manipulate the shape of our body through endless dieting or over-exercising or any other subconscious control mechanism that we may have adopted, then psh, you know, phew, <laughs> then I can finally be loved and I can finally feel happy. Then I will finally meet my partner and fall in love. I believe that body image and sexuality are very closely connected because weight loss is often associated with sexual desirability. And sometimes this can be a way of us actually asking for a deeper love and intimacy and craving that sort of connection in our lives. But we do it through trying to control our body through chronic dieting and over exercise. The problem with this strategy is we are giving away all of our power and happiness to an outside source. At the same time, it makes total sense why we would believe something like this, that thin is the ideal and that smaller is better and that if we lose weight, we'll be more beautiful and then we'll attract our partner and then we'll fall in love. We have been conditioned to think this way. Now when it comes to sex and body image and struggling with one's sexuality, there may be instances where people replace a lack of sexual intimacy with food. And again, <laughs> this makes total sense. The brain is always seeking out new avenues of pleasure. What is going to make us feel good? If someone has been a victim of any sort of sexual violence or sexual assault or sexual wounding, whether it be physical or emotional, sexual intimacy can actually be a very scary place for some people. And these people may start to seek out pleasure through other sources. So what I'm saying is food could be a symbolic replacement for intimacy. Like I mentioned, our brains constantly crave and scan for pleasure. And when we keep denying ourselves of pleasure and not eating the foods that we really do want to eat, this urge is going to keep knocking on the door and then that's when we may begin to engage in unwanted behaviors and habits such as compulsive eating, binge eating, overeating, the list goes on. It can be very hard to learn to trust yourself around food again if overeating and binge eating is something that you struggle with regularly. Likewise, it can be very terrifying to learn how to trust sexually again if you've been hurt in such a deep and vulnerable and intimate state. So for some people, food is used as a coping mechanism for the lack of something else in their lives. On top of that, food is accessible 
and it is an instant source of pleasure and gratification. So I ask you this, what are some other small ways that you can enjoy pleasure in your day-to-day -day life? I encourage you to write a pleasure inventory list. You can put anything on this list that makes you feel the slightest bit of happiness. So it can be anything from taking your first sip of coffee in the morning, waking up and putting on your favorite pair of slippers, wearing your favorite pair of panties, listening to some nice music, putting on some essential oils, anything that makes you feel good. I want you to write every single thing down onto a list. Where can you draw in more pleasure on your day-to-day -day life so that you may not revert and turn back to food and overeating and binge eating. Start by adding little bits of pleasure throughout the day and see what happens, see how you feel, see how this can enrich your life. And yes, while eating and sex are two amazing pleasurable experiences, there is also so much pressure around these things, around eating a certain way and looking a certain way and sexual expectation that we have become completely disembodied and we are stuck in our heads and we can't completely surrender to the experience and enjoy it. So what other small daily practices can you add into your day to allow yourself to feel and enjoy and experience pleasure? That is all that I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below. I will see you in a couple weeks, but until then, do not forget to eat squat income.